Hey, Alexandra. Hey, Hiro. So nice to meet you. I want to start at the beginning because you were born in Japan, then mm -hmm. raised in Guelph and Michigan. Then you went to high school in Tokyo, and now your base is Vancouver. How did you decide to make Canada your home? Well, uh, you know, after I moved to Guelph when I was three years old, uh, we spent enough time in, in Canada during my childhood that I was able to become a Canadian citizen. So uh, after all of my travels, you know, in Tokyo and in the U.S. with the college and grad school, because I was a Canadian citizen, I, uh, you know, I just naturally wound up in Canada uh, and uh, didn't, didn't like the snow so much. Um, and because my parents lived in Japan, the West Coast just made more sense. Now, it was the time when the Vancouver film industry was really getting going. So in that sense, it, it worked out perfectly for me. You're such a familiar face to anyone who's watched movies or TV. I mean, Altered Carbon, Midway, The Day the Earth Stood Still, Smallville. I mean, I could go on and on. Uh, how do you select the projects that you want to be in? Well, you know, I'm what I would call myself a journeyman actor. Uh, and certainly I have over the last 30 years or so amassed quite a few credits. Most of them I really haven't had a whole lot of choice uh, in terms of selecting them from from my point of view. Uh, I audition for projects like most other actors. I'm not by any means a name actor or an A-list actor so I don't really get to choose what projects I get to be a part of. I audition for them and then if the timing and the uh, the offer they make back is right then then I'll usually uh, agree to come aboard. Now, sometimes I do have to turn things down because, uh, or I just basically don't audition for them in the first place because uh, the material doesn't speak to me. But uh, it's very rare that I do get an opportunity to choose. Uh, mostly that's when I have independent projects here, here at home where uh, things are offered to me and then I, you know, I have a, an opportunity to decide if I want to be a part of it or not. When you audition for a role like the one in Upload, are they looking for an Asian actor or do you find that especially lately, the ethnicity hasn't been decided yet during the casting process? I've found in my experience that the vast majority of the time they, they're not looking for a specific ethnicity. Uh, now, obviously there are projects increasingly that are race specific where the cast is predominantly Asian, the cast is predominantly Japanese and so on. We've had several of those come through Vancouver in recent years. Uh, and uh, obviously, you know, that's a different situation. But the vast majority of the time, uh, race is not specified. Uh, and that was the case with uh, Star Trek Discovery, Upload, and, you know, the majority of shows that I've been in recently. Speaking of Star Trek Discovery, tell me about your role and what he does in the, in the new season. So my character, Dr. Hirai, is a astrolinguist. He, he's a, an expert in extraterrestrial languages. And uh, in this season four, the uh, last four episodes, uh, we encounter an alien species for, uh, I think it's really since the original Star Trek, it's, it's one of the, it may be the only time when uh, Star Trek has encountered an alien species from beyond the galactic barrier. So, you know, if you watch Star Trek, if you're familiar with it, most of the aliens on Star Trek are, tend to be anthropomorphic. Uh, you know, they're bipedal, they have a head with two eyes and, and so on, and they speak languages that we can understand through our universal translators. Uh, but the Tensi is different. It's from beyond the galactic barrier. Uh, it may not be anthropomorphic at all. We don't know how to communicate with it. We don't even know how the Tensi does communicate or if it wants to communicate or, and so on. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a rare opportunity uh, for 
fans of the franchise and of course for me to to be involved in that mission that was you know it's kind of rare even within the in, within the Star Trek franchise I watched season two of Upload and mm -hmm. I didn't get a real feeling for what your character Detective Sato is all about I have a feeling that he, we're going to see a lot more of him in season three when the murder investigation heats up so what mm -hmm. was your take on that character yeah, you know, I have I have a similar take because, as you know, there's uh, a lot of secrecy now, necessarily with scripts, um, you know, and for for actors like me, we often don't see scripts in advance. When we audition for parts, we don't actually uh, audition using scenes from the show. If you know what I mean, um, upload and uh, actually upload. It may have been a scene similar to what I ultimately wound up doing. But Star Trek Discovery, when I auditioned, uh, the scene that I auditioned with wasn't even a scene from from the show. So I had no idea what I was going to be doing until I I wound up doing it. And with upload, uh, there was there was another episode in this season that I, you know, was going to feature in, which uh, ultimately, uh, you know, they decided that um, they preferred to end the season the way they did. So um, I'm in the same situation as you. I don't really have a clear idea of, of where my investigation is going to go. Um, but I certainly enjoyed, you know, he's, he's kind of a very gruff, uh, hard-boiled egg, <laughs> in, you know, in terms of, you know, he's kind of that detective, hard-boiled detective kind of character, which is, I think, is a uh, an interesting contrast to the comedy that, you know, goes on. Are they saving that scene or that, that episode that you feature more in for the next season? I hope so. Presumably, that's what they're doing, yeah. You also star in Orphan First Kill, which is a sequel to Orphan. Had you seen the first movie before you took on this role? Years ago, I mean, the first movie came out 13, 14 years ago, I believe. And uh, I certainly remember seeing that in the in the movie theaters. And um, this, this is going to be a really interesting project to see Isabel Furman reprise a role, right, that she played when she was a child, a child actor. She was probably 12 or 13 when she did that. And now she's obviously an adult woman in her 20s. And uh, she and she gets to reprise that same role. So I know, you know, working with her, it was it was a huge rush for her, a huge thrill to be able to do that. And uh, I had a tremendous time working on it as well. We shot it in Winnipeg at the height of the of the first wave of the pandemic. So um, that was challenging and a little bit scary. But, uh, you know, we we managed to do it. And uh, I'm really looking forward to to the film coming out. Me too. I love the first one, but I'm curious, how do they have Isabel Furman play a child again when she's now in her 20s? Like, is there some kind of, um, you know, special effects that go into that? Well, I, I don't want to give too much away, but what I can say is that there's no CGI trickery involved. It's all very, it's all done very organically. Um, you know, there's things we can do with the uh, forced angles. And, I mean, how did we make the hobbits in Lord of the Rings look as small as they did compared to Gandalf, for instance, right? I mean, there's things you can do with uh, forced perspective and the way that you build the sets and so on to make certain actors appear smaller vis-a-vis -vis everything else in the environment and the other actors and so on. So there was some of that went on. Um, but I, you know what? I think that, uh, you know, fans of the first film are really in for a treat. And uh, that's part of the movie magic. So I don't want to give too much of that away. I'm definitely looking forward to it. And you've got several more projects on the go. What can you tell me about those? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, as I mentioned, there have been a few really big uh, projects come through Vancouver recently with predominantly Asian casts. 
Uh, one of them is coming out soon on Apple TV. That would be Pachinko, based on the uh, best-selling novel. It's about uh, Korean, the Korean minority within Japan itself. Uh, and that's going to be a huge production. I think in, in about a week, it, it premieres on Apple+. Plus. And then shooting right now in Vancouver is the remake of James Clavell's Shogun, which was a huge uh, hit miniseries in the 80s with R Richard Chamberlain and Toshiro Mifune. And uh, it's, uh, you know, being reprised now by uh, Disney Plus, uh, starring uh, Hiroyuki Sanada in the, in the role that uh, Toshiro Mifune had. So that's also going to be an epic, epic production. And I've also had, I can't say too much about it, but I've also had the uh, opportunity to be a part of the live action uh, Avatar Last Airbender, which is now shooting here in Vancouver as well. So, you know, it's exciting times for me. There's lots of big projects that I get to be a part of and uh, uh, I'm just uh, <laughs> thrilled about, you know, all of that coming here and being being able to uh, participate. And I mean, that's a lot of genres that you've mentioned. Do you have a uh, like a genre that you like to see yourself? And is the kind of genre that you like to be in for a movie or TV show different than that? Because I mean, you've done a horror. Are horrors mm -hmm. something that you like to see? Uh, I'm. I guess I would say I'm a bit squeamish, <laughs> personally. So. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not, I wouldn't say that horror is my genre of choice. We get a lot of sci-fi here in Vancouver. And I think that's because back in the nineties, we had some really big shows like X-Files, Outer Limits, uh, that came through and we, you know, helped to create the infrastructure to be able to do those shows. And of course, once you have that infrastructure in your, in your town then other shows like that come to use that infrastructure and so we're i think we're something of a mecca for shows that are that require special effects uh and cgi and so on so there's there's a lot of sci-fi here and i get to be a part of that and uh you know i i think that science fiction is one genre where you get to talk about contemporary issues but in a non-judgmental uh, non-preachy way because it's a fantasy universe, right? And so that's that's something I do enjoy about that genre for sure. And finally, what would fans be surprised to know about you? What would fans be surprised to know about me? <laughs> I, I uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big sports fan. I played a lot of sports, I still do. I coached on my son's football teams for four or five years and um we're still we're still at it uh i'm getting ready for the the upcoming softball season and uh i don't know i don't know that people uh think of me as like an athletic guy but i have been uh all of my life and uh you know when i get up on the softball diamond i'm playing against kids that are less than half my age right uh, but I, you know, I hold my own, so I'm proud of that. And are you musical as well? I see a couple of guitars behind you. Yes, I, uh, that was my main ambition in life when I was a teenager, for sure. Uh, all I did in high school was play in high school rock bands. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely a private passion of mine as well. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. It's been a real pleasure. Oh, likewise. Thanks for this opportunity to reach your audience. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this interview, please hit the like button and also subscribe and press the notification button so that you don't miss out on any other celebrity interviews.